Well, our political guru, Norman Smith, has been at the conference all week for us and is still sunning himself on the beach right now. It looks like you're enjoying the <laughs> sunshine there, Norman. Um, give us your analysis of Jeremy Corbyn, though. <laughs> Yeah, Joanna, good morning, good morning. And another stunning day here in Brighton. I have to say, I'm just having a cup of coffee to perk myself up. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn doesn't seem to need cups of coffee to perk himself up. I was following him around this morning. He was doing a whole range of uh, morning media interviews, and he seemed pretty chipper, pretty pleased with the way his speech went. I guess the sort of main thrust of the criticism of it has been the idea that it was fine for the Labour Party faithful, but did it actually sort of reach out to people beyond the Labour tribe. Well, for our deck chair debate today, I'm joined by two people very much in the Labour tribe. But Aisha Hazarika, who, uh, well, she was a top advisor for Ed Miliband and Harriet Harman, prepped them for PMQ, so she knows a thing or two about speeches. And also Owen Jones, Guardian journalist and a prominent Corbyn supporter. I mean, Owen, let me just start with you. What was in the speech for Mr and Mrs Middle England? I think there's stuff about self-employment absolutely critical. I mean, if you're self-employed and one in seven workers are now are self-employed and those people, they like the independence, but they don't necessarily like the insecurity. Their tax credits have been cut by the government. Uh, they like pensions, paid sick leave often, paid maternity leave. So the fact he actually made a pitch for self-employed people who are, I suppose, classic middle Britain, if you like, middle income people. And he said, you know, we'll support you to grow your businesses. That's actually not a message you'd expect necessarily to come from Labour full stop, let alone Jamie Corbyn. So he needs to build on that sort of thing, talking about, you know, the, the entrepreneur, the self-employed, uh, as well as talking about home ownership, which he alluded to as well. So it was in the speech. OK, Aisha, I noticed he finished his speech by citing Keir Hardy. And that got a huge cheer, as you'd expect, in the hall. But, I mean, is that really how you want to end a big conference speech when you know you've got a chance to talk to the whole electorate? No, I think he missed out on an opportunity. I think, in a way, he made the speech he had to because he's just had this huge victory. He started the speech by saying, look, I've talked about these things for 30 years. I'm not going to stop talking about it. Fair enough. But my concern was he didn't do enough. He reached the hall. He didn't do enough to reach the people watching in their living rooms on the television at night. I also was disappointed he didn't mention the fact that we had lost the last election really badly, didn't have any analysis, and also didn't mention, you know, what are we going to do to, to win people back. And when he did his list of thank yous, I would have liked him to thank some of the candidates that worked really hard in the seats we should have won and we didn't. Yeah, oh, and I suppose you can judge a speech as much by what is not in it. And we didn't get those two issues which probably hurt Labour more than anything in the election, namely the economy in the shape of the deficit and immigration. Now, what does that tell us about Jeremy Corbyn's approach to trying to rebuild Labour? Well, he did obviously talk about the economy in a new approach, and the key speech on that, of course, came from the, the shadow chancellor the day before John McDonnell. And I thought that was interesting because the pitch Labour seems to be going for now are to say, we're not deficit deniers, Labour is going to... We're going to close the deficit, but we won't do it on the backs of low-income and middle-income uh, earners. We'll do it by closing, co cutting tax breaks and subsidies uh, for people at the top, talking about investment, creating the skilled jobs of the future, learning from Germany, for example, where they have public investment banks to support renewable energy, for example. So it is there. They need to emphasise it, absolutely, because the whole point what Labour have to face is not just being anti-austerity, but pro-something else, pro a different sort of economic model, and to communicate that in a way that kind of resonates with people that's tough because the Tories are very clever at this they often they repeat messages over and over yeah. again they have very good message discipline so the task for Labour is if they're going to have a message on things like the deficit and immigration then you need a clear sharp message that you keep repeating and there's a way the Tories do. One of the other things Aisha which Jeremy Corbyn has made a lot of is his sense that politics has changed that Labour has changed he talks about how so many thousands of people have come into the Labour Party but has Britain changed or is it just the Labour Party that's changed? Well, this is the big question. I mean, Jeremy Corbyn has already defied political gravity by getting on the ballot paper and then winning with this huge mandate. And I think party members have got sympathy for the fact that he has changed the Labour Party. The Labour Party did need to be changed. Probably a direction of people like me, the spin doctors, no, the, never. <laughs> the management, the professionalisation of politics. There's been a cultural revolution. But Packing out town halls and mobilising members is really, really good, but does that win elections? We are essentially not a protest organisation. We want to win power. That's what Keir Hardy said. That's what we've got to. He's got to find a way of turning all this very goodwill and all this energy into actually winning votes. Remember, in seats that 
had small Tory majorities and now have big Tory majority. Got to win those seats in the next election. I just want to ask you both. Do you think that Jeremy Corbyn needs a professional team, a spin doctor around him, or would that totally undermine everything he's trying to do? I don't think it's so much about the sort of process in terms of who he's got around him. Jeremy is Jeremy. He had a, you know, he, he look, he's done the politically impossible. He had a stunning victory. He beat all the mainstream candidates. He won and he won big and good on him for that. It's what he says to the public. I keep saying this because it's so important. And we're going to know next year what the public really think of Jeremy. We've got big elections in London, in Scotland and Wales. That's going to be the big test about whether he's communicating with the public. It doesn't matter about spin doctors, about what he wears. It's actually how is the public connecting with him and we're going to have a chance to see that next year. Yeah, I mean, look, he needs to marry his authenticity. That's what people quite like about him, even people who, who don't support him. He seems, you know, he doesn't uh, speak in a professionalised way. He speaks from the heart. He speaks off message, off script. But at the same time, of course, you do need a sophisticated media strategy. The vast majority of the media are going to be very, very hostile to him. They're going to throw absolutely everything at him. The temptation then is to go, oh, go away media, you can yell at us, we'll just go out and build our grassroots movement. The fact they have this huge grassroots movement, hundreds of thousands of people who are very enthusiastic now, is a brilliant thing and they need to organise in each community. But you also need, of course, to marry that to a sophisticated media strategy, which means clear messages, message discipline, uh, and I don't think that means overriding his authenticity, it just means getting a clear message across the cut through the hostility from the media. Guys, we're going to have to leave it there, but thanks very much indeed uh, for your thoughts. Joanna, there we are, we end the conference pretty much as we started, I'm delighted to say, in glorious sunshine. I think it's about the first party conference I will have come away from with even a bit of a tan. <laughs> you are looking very suntanned. Enjoy the rest of the sunshine today. See you later, Norman, thanks. <laughs>